versus of the guys. Welcome to Fun and Games, the first ever episode. I'm Mossy, he's Robbo, and this is a light-hearted look at the big games in sport. Robbo, it's a huge day today. Why is that? Mate, it's, uh, it's a, it is huge. Huge is probably the word for it. It is. Well, I've been looking at the calendar every day for the last few months, weeks, years, and uh, it's only one year to go now, August the 5th, until the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, the games of the 31st Olympiad, and mate, we're here, we've got the Brazilian flag, we've got the Amazon jungle here in the studio at Fun and Games. And mate, I can't wait for these games. We're going to be, I guess, breathing some life into it. It's all people are talking about at the moment. And uh, I've got games fever, that's for sure. Mate, 365 days to go. It's almost there. I mean, almost in panic stations here. I don't have my bags packed. Yeah. But uh, look, mate, a year ago, uh, this is what we were up to. Okay. Jack, 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 pass! Bien. Awesome work. It's one of the biggest controversies of the games. Sally Pearson, you are sensational. She gives a big hug to Robbo and Mossy. TV. Yay. Yeah, Mossy, well, there you go. As you said, a year ago to the day, till the Glasgow uh, Commonwealth Games finished, that was the games of the 20th, the double X games, the 20th Commonwealth ad, if you want to call them those. And they were heralded as the greatest games ever. And uh, really, mate... Mate, aren't they all heralded as the greatest oh, games so. ever? Those ones were, in particular, we were there, as you could see, in the thick of it. And we hope to do the same at, uh, at every other games in, in the future to come, mate. But it's a special moment uh, over there in Glasgow. But we're moving on now, and it's all about the Rio. I've got the Rio undies on, um, and it's all about Rio uh, from here on in. Mate, well, they don't wear many undies in Rio, that's for sure. Now it's time for us to get all the updates in Games News with Cal. We might be off to Rio in 12 months' time, but in 2022, it's Beijing will be the place to be. They'll have been announced as the Winter Olympic host by IOC President Thomas Bach. He turned over that famous bit of paper. To Cessnock shooter Dan Ripacoli, and a congratulations, not only off to the World Cup in preparing for South America next year, he's just had a bub. Congratulations, little Asher has been brought into the world. And the Esposito brother and sister, Chloe and Max, They've booked their ticket to Brazil next year. They're the first on the Australian team to do so. That's the news. Back to you, boys. Well, there you go, Robbo. Three big ticket items that we need to go through today. Firstly, Beijing, from out of nowhere, has been awarded the 2022 Winter Olympics. And it <laughs> but, makes sense, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> a city that uh, has hosted Olympic Games before, Mossy. Let's not forget that the 20. Uh, 08 or the 2008 Olympic Games, the Summer Games, let's mention, uh, were held there in Beijing in the, the bird's nest, and it's, it's known as, you know, a fantastic place for the, the Games, albeit a little bit of smog. But the Winter Games, Mossy, this has got me puzzled. They do not have any natural snow there in Beijing, so I'm not sure what they're going to do in terms of hosting uh, Winter Games, but it, they got the bid. It was between them and the Kazakhstani city of Almaty, and uh, look... The bid it was very, very close. One of the closest uh, bids, I believe, in the history of Olympic bidding. But Thomas Bach, as you heard Cal mention, he flicked over the bit of paper and it was Beijing 2022. They've had a, a big week up there in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Um, but, mate, that's the way it went. And I know I got a tweet this morning direct from the Kazakhstani Prime Minister, Karim Massimo, and uh, he is furious. They are raging in the streets of uh, Almaty at the moment and all through Kazakhstan. It's a national day of mourning. Absolutely. My theory is that uh, when they got the delegates off the uh, plane, they just said, look out there to the mountains, look at all the snow, because you couldn't really see them, and it was obviously the smog. Now, in other news there, we heard about big Dan Ripacoli. He had a baby. Well, it wasn't him. It was his wife, Alex, and... Uh, it would have been tough to pick out the names. Yes, and if you haven't heard of that name, Dan Ripacoli, well, you're going to hear about him a lot on this show. He is one of our crowd favourites. Uh, big Dan, he's about eight, 18 foot, I think, Mossy. Big, big fella. But, uh, yeah, he's had a, a new little addition to the world, and I know he'll be very, very proud. We saw on social media he was beaming, and uh, all the best to he and his wife, uh, Alex. But, look, mate, I think... Look, the new addition of Asha, well, she's going to be primed and, uh, and groomed, basically, for an Olympic start. Probably, what do you reckon, 2024 or so? That might be about the time 
She'll be, she'll be firing up. Well, it's just down the road, mate. It's down there in Dubbo, so I don't think there'll be a problem. She may only be about 13 years of age, but look, at the end of the day, I think it's, uh, it's going to be there. She'll be there uh, shooting away like a dad, and uh, it's going to be fantastic. He also, it's worth mentioning, he loves shooting in the rainbow socks as well. He's full of colour, and we'll, uh, we'll hopefully get him on the show at some point as well. Look out for Big Dan. He's hoping to qualify very shortly over at the World Champions, which uh, Championships, Mossy, do you remember where they are? Uh, no, Azerbaijan. There That's we right, go. Azerbaijan, yes. Why didn't they uh, b- make a bid? for the, the uh, Winter Olympics. Oh, don't talk about it, Robbo. Really? Don't talk about it. Really? Yeah, that's right. Now, speaking of the Olympics, Robbo, we finally have our qualifiers. That's right, the first qualifiers. They are in the modern pentathlon, and isn't that the ultimate Olympic sport? Oh, look, it is. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a good pub trivia question, Mossy. Name the five sports in uh, modern pentathlon. I'm going to put it to you right now. What are they? Okay, we have the 300-metre uh, swim. Right. Yeah, we 200-metre swim, rather. We have fencing. Yes. We have a 3,200-metre run with shooting involved yes horse riding or, yes. or jumping yes. and the last one well you've combined running and shooting there oh, so i think well, that was the go. five that's five and, and my my uh, mail is mossy that this modern pentathlon it stems from uh, old days the medieval castle days look and it was all about trying to attack the castle maybe uh save the fair maiden or kiss the frog i don't know what they were doing but you had to swim across the moat you had to uh, scale the walls somehow. You had to obviously, you know, shoot off the security guards there at the castle. And then you had to run away as fast as you could. Um, and you had to do some fencing along the way as well. If you couldn't shoot them, you had to fence them. And uh, so, yeah, mate, lots of history there. And Australia with a rich history, Kitty Chiller, the chef de Michon. How well, could we forget? That's her background is modern pentathlon. And no wonder they got the first two on the plane. I think there's a little bit of bias there from Kitty getting them on that Qantas plane first. But well done to Mad Max and Close Your Eye Chloe. Uh, They're on the plane. Mossy, a proud family. Let's not uh, forget uh, Father Daniel represented Australia in the pentathlon in 1984 in uh, in LA. And Sister Emily, well, she's hoping to secure her spot as well in the pistol shooting. So it could be a family affair. The only thing I want to know is how can we get the mum involved? That's Suzanne. At the moment, she's making all the sandwiches, but we've got to get her a start as well. I want to see her in the tracksuit. Absolutely, mate. It'll be nothing sort of short of sensational if we get her over there. Hi, I'm Chloe Esposito, and you're watching Mossy and Robbo's Fun and Games. So that's the big news uh, this week uh, on Fun and Games. We also have the Player of the Week, and it was Madison Keeney in the diving over there at the FINA World Championships. Group 5, is group of piruetas. Well, Mossy, you mentioned the FINA World Championships, the diving. I don't know about the uh, the attempt there from Madison. I think it was brilliant, mate. That, that took me back to uh, Bathurst Olympic Pool uh, when they four times a year they opened up the diving board and we went out there and I've done that 15 times. That was 10 out of 10. I put it to you, Mossy, degree of difficulty, 3.2 for that dive. Is that a little bit rich? I mean... I thought it would have been closer to point two. That is pretty simple, and I, I can picture, you know, I've done it myself. Uh, I know she had minimal splash there, but really, that's a pretty easy dive, and uh, interesting the look from the coach there as well. That really said it all. But, you know, that's, the, that's what's going on at the moment. Lots of, lots of world championships happening, Mossy, and lots in the pool as well. Um, I've been following the Stingers. That's our Aussie women's water polo team, the Sharks. That's the men's water polo team. Um, we've had, what else is there? Synchronised swimming. We've booked our, our team across there for Rio in that as well. Uh, so, and swimming championships as well. They're going on as we speak. So, mate, it's all happening. Throw into the mix triathlon. That happened on the weekend. Archery's been going as well. Mate, there's 27 world championships coming up uh, where athletes are looking to qualify for Rio. We're going to be covering it all here in the coming weeks and months. And, mate, I, I'm excited already. I'm going to have to have a lie down just after this show. Well, Robbo, that's all we've got time for this week. And remember, it's all fun and games until... You get poked in the eye with an oversized boarding pass. <laughs>